Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to be going over second degree type 2 AV blocks. Um, if you haven't seen our second degree type 1 or first degree AV blocks video, I would uh, recommend you go to watch those first so that you can get a good progression and continue to understand the evolution of the anatomy that we're going to go through here. If you want to follow along with these strips, you can go down and download the PDF so you can follow along with these documents and uh, make your own notes. And so, um, as the, you know, the name implies, we're going to be going over second degree, a subtype of second degree blocks. Remember that second degree blocks are blocks that not all P waves will conduct to a QRS complex. And so, um, remember that if we look at the anatomy of the AV junction, right, the AV junction is the region that allows for conduction to go between the atria and the ventricles. And so, we usually have this cardiac skeleton that funnels all of the atrial signals that are coming from the SA node, it funnels them all into our AV junction. And the AV junction is comprised, remember, of two structures. So the AV junction has two structures. First structure is the AV node itself, which we know that the AV node, we'll kind of put it in this green ball right here. That's our AV node. That's the first portion of the AV junction to receive the signal. We know that the AV node is what delays the signal by 120 to 200 milliseconds, right? And if it's a little bit diseased, if the AV node itself is diseased, that PR interval, the PR interval will change, right? It'll get longer potentially. And so that's what we see a lot in our second degree type one, in our first degree AV blocks. But the next part of the AV junction is this bit of tissue right here that you see is labeled the bundle of Hiss, right? So the second part is our Hiss bundle. These are conducting fibers that are exiting the AV node and then sing sending the signal down, you know, via the, the bundle branches and everything down our highway system. And so second degree type two AV blocks are characterized by diseases of the Hiss bundle. And the Hiss bundle has a certain type of um, behavior that's called all or nothing conduction, right? We said in the previous videos, go ahead and check those out, that the AV node does something called decremental conduction, where it can slow it down. But the, the Hiss bundle does not slow So it does not slow down, okay? It either conducts or doesn't conduct. And when it becomes diseased, when it becomes diseased, you will see where there are moments that it does not conduct. So what does that mean? So that means, right, we know that when P waves conduct to QRS complexes, the interval that we measure is the PR interval. That's our, the PR interval is telling us what the AV junction is doing. And so, whenever the Hiss bundle is diseased, my PR interval will not change, right? The PR interval will not change, but not all P's will conduct to a QRS in a second degree type 2 AV block, right? And so that means that my PR interval will stay the same until it doesn't, until the P does not conduct to the QRS. And that's because the bundle of this is all or nothing conduction. So these people have lesions within their bundle of Hiss. And so let's take a look. These are a couple of monitors, Holter monitors, right, wearable devices. And so what we see here is that we have this P wave conduct to a QRS, and that PR interval is normal, right? My PR interval is normal. It's like, what is that, 160 milliseconds. Then we see a P conduct to that QRS, with a PR interval that is still 160 milliseconds. 
And then we have this P conduct to this QRS with a PR interval that is still 160 milliseconds. And then the next P does not conduct to that QRS. And so that tells me that where did that P wave likely get blocked? Probably not by the AV node itself, because the AV node, which is what is slowing the signal down, is doing it appropriately every single time. 160, 160, 160. But because this one gets blocked, this tells me that the PR interval stayed the same until it dropped a QRS. And we know that the only way that would happen is if there was a block at the Hiss bundle, which is a second degree type two AV block. Let's take a look again at this bottom strip down here. We see another strip where it's P conducts to the QRS with a PR interval that looks to be about 180 milliseconds. We've got a P that conducts to the QRS in the same fashion. A P that conducts to the QRS still with a PR interval of 180 milliseconds. Then we have a P wave that drops a QRS. And then we have P to QRS, P to QRS, P to QRS with all the same PR intervals. And then again, a dropped QRS. And so these PR intervals stay the same. And then we have a dropped QRS. This tells me that the site of the lesion, this is really important, is right here at the Hiss bundle. Right? Remember, the AV junction is composed of the AV node itself, which is what is responsible for delaying signal, and then the Hiss bundle, which is responsible for passing along signal. And so, because of its all or nothing properties, that is where the lesion exists. And so, that's an example, again, of a second degree type 2. AV block. We'll talk about the importance of delineating the two of those after the next strip. So let's look at the next strip. So here you notice that we have P's that are conducting to QRS's, P's that are conducting to QRS's. This is another Holter monitor. So these strips are continuous. And the P to QRS complexes don't change at all. The PR interval is remaining the same. The PR interval is remaining the same. The PR interval is remaining the same until it doesn't. And then the PR interval remains the same, and then it doesn't. And so because of that, we can say that this person is developing a second degree type 2 AV block. Okay? And so remember, this is because the per the site within the AV junction that is getting hit or diseased is that Hiss bundle. And so normally you can see like here we have a P wave that conducts to the QRS and a P wave that's blocked. A P wave that's conducted to the QRS and then a P wave that's blocked. So you can see that this is what we would call 2 to 1 AV conduction. And when it's 2 to 1, right, we don't get, you know, in order to say that this is a type 1 or a type 2, we need to have consecutive P QRS, consecutive P QRS. And we get that here. We see that behavior before the drop happens. So we know this is a second degree type 2, right? So what is a second degree type 2? Let's review. It's when the PR interval stays the same and then it drops, right? Because of all or nothing conduction, right? So we have P QRS, P QRS, P, QRS, the PR intervals all say the same, and then we drop. That's a block. And so that's a second degree type 2 AV block. And why is this important that we have type 1 versus type 2s that we can diagnose these? Well, this person's disease is at the bundle of Hiss, we said, right? So second degree type 2 is at that bundle of Hiss. Well, what happens if 
the degree the disease worsens and the bundle of hiss cannot conduct anything so it's completely dead all the cells are dead they're necrosed something happened this person's got ischemic heart disease whatever it gets worsened and the hiss bundle is no longer able to function it's dead well what happens if you know now we have sinus nodes sending signals down to the AV node. The AV node is trying to conduct them down, but it gets blocked because this his bundle is now completely dead, right? This person used to have a second degree type 2 block, but now it's worsened and this person's his bundle doesn't work at all. Well, they are no longer, they are no longer able to generate a junctional, write that again, a junctional escape, right? Because if this person develops a block that's worsening at that point, if we develop junctional escapes, they're not going to make it down. And so this person's only way to beat within the ventricles is from a ventricular escape rhythm, which if you remember from earlier lectures, Ventricular escape rhythms only occur at a rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute, and that might not be enough to keep this patient alive. So that's why people that you identify that have a second degree type 2 AV block, what do they need? Second degree type 2, they need dual chamber pacemaker. And not only do they need a pacemaker, they need it urgently. Because, like we said, if the block worsens, then they won't be able to generate that escape rhythm to keep themselves alive. Okay, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions about second degree type 2 AV blocks, let me know. These ones are scary. Um, second degree type 1s are not as scary as these. So, um, yeah, throw your comments uh, your questions into the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. And um, the next video we'll be talking about for AV blocks is complete AV blocks. So, um, alrighty. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. See you on the next ECG video.